Rucker, Marilyn Manson. Mrs. Brady, Florence Henderson. Talk Radio's Key Gordon Liddy and conservative activist Lakita Garth. And now, the star of Politically Incorrect, Bill Maher. Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for that spontaneous outburst. <laughs> I tell you, this uh, UPS uh, strike is getting ugly. Have you been following this? Have you been waiting for a package? Uh, it's, <laughs> it's getting it, but there is a good side to it. Uh, over at the Home Shopping Channel, the stuff is so backed up that their crap is coming back into style. <laughs> Yes, and uh, President Clinton has a new fundraising uh, problem. Uh, boy, this, the committee isn't even in session, and they have problems with this. Uh, apparently, an Oklahoma Indian tribe was at the White House uh, giving their last dime to him. They gave $100,000 in the hope that uh, uh, land that they gave up like 100 years ago would be receded back to them. And not only that, uh, the real incriminating thing for Clinton is that the Indians kept calling him by his Indian name, Pocahontas. Uh, <laughs> Now, <laughs> I kid the president. From across the ocean, interesting news. I thought this is a, a sign of the times. It, London says they have absolutely run out of cemetery space. You can't die there anymore. <laughs> they say ha they have not room for one more corpse, which apparently is why a Rod Stewart is always on tour. Getting <laughs> <laughs> Also in London, this is the talk of the, the British airwaves now. Uh, apparently, Lady Di has a new boyfriend. Have you seen this? He is an Arab playboy named Dodi Fayed, and apparently, they say, the press over there says he is helping her uh, overcome her re repressed sexuality. <laughs> or as they say uh, in London, uh, getting, getting in touch with your inner Fergie. <laughs> all right, thanks for coming. It's all been satirized for your perspective. She is an entertainer, activist, and a former Miss Black California. Her forthcoming rap CD is called Lakita, Lakita Garth. Thank you so much. Nice to see you. Star of stage, screen, and television, she's known worldwide as Mrs. Carol Brady, the very Brady Florence Henderson. Hello, Mrs. Brady. Hello, Mrs. Brady. Hello, Mrs. Brady. Hello, Mrs. Brady. Hello, Author, actor, plumber, and talk radio host, no one else is quite G. Gordon Liddy. Gordon, good to see you. Thank you. And he is the rock music phenomenon who the governor of Oklahoma calls proof that society's moral values continue to crumble. <laughs> it's huge CD hit. By the way, this is a great album. Angie Christ superstar, Marilyn Manson. Hey, man. Thank you. Okay. Well, all right. I'm glad you're all here. We have, of course, a very controversial figure here, Mrs. Brady. Um, Look out. <laughs> I want to protest something. You want to protest? I want already? To protest I haven't something. even asked the question. I know, but I want to protest something. Uh, I've seen the promotional material for this show. Now, uh, here you've got a guy who, as far as I know, has never even been busted by be uh, for being, a, you know, impersonating a human being or anything. And I've got nine felonies for which I am totally unrepellent, and he is supposed to be the bad guy. Now, what's going on? Where are standards in this country? That's a good point. You have been to prison. They have tried to arrest you, but they haven't succeeded. Right. Right. It's yeah, the lipstick. If we put some lipstick on him, I think everything will change. <laughs> I'd like to see you try. <laughs> um, 
don't Christian groups need somebody to protest against? Isn't there a symbiotic relationship well, between there's, there's whoever they're against, be it you or the gays or whatever, abortion clinics, don't they need each other? Or Kathy Lee Gifford. You know, <laughs> there's, an old, there's an old saying that the, the devil has always been the church's best friend because he's kept him in business. And I think, yeah. like you're saying, they've picked me to be that. But I think, I don't mind the protesting. I just wish that they would get the facts straight because they think that I do a lot of things. But I'm really about individuality, and that's really the bottom line. I, I want think people you guys to think have it totally backward. You are just, you guys have it totally backward. You're saying mm. that the church needs people like Marilyn and other people to stay in business when actually Maryland wouldn't even Manson. exist. Well, Brian, if we really want to get real here, because that's his real name, that's what his mama named him. But the point is, is that his, oh, his do you album call him is Cassius called Clay, Anti. Too? <laughs> But you know what, even the name of his album, Antichrist Superstar, if there was no Christ, there would, you know, he's, you know, Christ is, he needs Christ to stay in business. Because if he's trying to push the envelope against home. You know, but and that's the, that's the whole point. I, I think that when people are talking the about, Christ they show up, really a they show there. up, yeah, exactly. but they show up at these concerts and they protest. I think it's a sad commentary when we have put it on the slate that only the Christian right thinks that there's something wrong here. I don't know. Now, there are rumors about what you do, and then there's the reality of what you do. Mm -hmm. There are, for example, you do rip pages out of the Bible in your concert. You do wipe your ass with the American flag. Mm -hmm. Some of these things, you have to admit, are controversial. Absolutely. I mean, they're designed to make people think, but the point with the Bible or a flag is to say it's only as valid as you make it in your heart. A, a it's piece all of about paper, perception, isn't it, Marilyn? A piece of paper or a, a piece of cloth doesn't mean anything. It's what you believe. And I want people to think about what they believe. I want them to consider if everything they've been taught, if that's what they want to believe or that's what they've been told that they have to believe. You know, but I agree with that. In the sense, I do, I do agree with that point. In the sense that this, I have more respect, and some people, you hear me out when you hear this. So I have more respect for this young man than I have for the majority of people in this country. Because 86% of Americans claim to be Christian, Judeo-Christian, whatever else. And they're not. They're hypocrites. But the point is, is that when I see this young man, you know, it kind of, it does draw a line in the standard. We need to realize we are in a cultural war and everyone wants to straddle the fence. Either you are anti-Christ or you are Christ. It's as simple as that. Either, either there are standards or they're not. in us? I don't. No, I don't. I don't oh, wipe, I don't wipe my rear end with the American flag. And you know, I, I, you know, I don't see you that, don't you know, giving evil? someone oral sex, giving somebody oral sex on stage. You know, and he wants to... this well. show? I haven't seen that. <laughs> uh, I gotta take a break. We'll come back to this. <laughs> to be in the Los Angeles area and would like free tickets to Politically Incorrect, call 213-852-2655. Okay, uh, some of us are old enough to remember what uh, a, a rock band had to do in former days to upset parents. <laughs> and it really wasn't very much, right? I mean, the Beatles, when they first came out, had long hair. It wasn't really much longer than yours, Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. It was not long hair, and they were apoplectic. You what? know, talking about that and how people look and their, you know, perception and, and the way people look at you and go, my God. But you know what? I look back. <laughs> Seriously, I look back at the early Brady Bunch days, I look like the Antichrist. <laughs> <laughs> that hair and the skirts and the platforms, right? We went through some of the things over the course of time. Now, in 1956, when Elvis went on Ed Sullivan, they wouldn't show him below the waist. Right, Do you know right. this? I mean, this was history. Yeah, I remember it. Because Sullivan. that would upset, I guess, America. In 1967, Mick Jagger went on with the Rolling Stones. Ed Sullivan couldn't sing the lyrics let's spend the night together. He had to change it to let's spend some time together. Mm -hmm. And I think along the way, if you put what the rock groups were prohibited from doing with what kids were doing, there is a difference. I mean, in 1956, when that was what pushed the envelope, the troubles in the school were chewing gum and patent leather shoes that could see up a skirt. But Bill, I was the today. Today, yeah. they're throwing babies yeah. 
out with the bathwater, literally. Now, isn't there a connection there? Well, I think if parents spent more time trying to censor rock music and art and movies and things like that, and they spent the time teaching their kids to appreciate and understand those things, and to know what's right and what's wrong. I think that's, that's more time spent, uh, more value. It's less about Maryland, but more about <laughs> the, the hundreds of thousands of young people. What, mot what motivates them to go out, not just him, but you know, Ozzy Osbourne in the 70s, he was mm -hmm. real big. What motivates them to go out and buy a quote unquote, you know, so called demon possessed young man's album? But well, the, you know, more importantly, why, what possesses him to go out on stage? No, 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 no. but this, this, see, that, that's the whole thing. If there were no crowd, if there was no market, you know, he would be out of business. If there weren't people okay. buying his records, making it platinum, and we have to see what's here. in the psyche wait, of wait, America. Jordan, Jordan wants to break in, yeah, so I to want, speak. I want to break in, so to speak. <laughs> The drift of this conversation seems to be, at least what I seem <laughs> to get from you, is uh, yeah. a question is, is uh, Manson and, and others, are they responsible for the kind of society we have today? And I think that that is absolutely backwards. We have a society right. today with totally without reference to Manson here, uh, in which it is perfectly permitted, and it happens thousands of times uh, you know, throughout the year, when they take a viable baby from a mother, all the way except for the top of the head, shove a scissors through the base of its skull and suck out its brains, and you're complaining about him. I'm not complaining about well, him. Also, I like think, him. think about this. What, if you want to blame rock music for things, think about uh, what the Bible's done. What about Heaven's Gate or Jim Jones or the Ku Klux Klan, right. what they do in the that name of Christ? They totally defy the Bible. Yeah, but the Bible says well, you love God and hate your brother. You're a liar and God is not in you. Obviously, right. you have not read that. No, I've read the Bible. Man, I'm just saying what people do in the name of the, the Bible, Bible is a liar and God isn't in him. So, you know, if we're going to quote I'm the Bible, saying what, you what complain people do in that the people name take you out of context, don't take the Bible out of context. Oh, but the majority of people do not take the Bible out of context. He's you know, not taking the Bible out of context. He's he is not. taking Friedrich Nietzsche out of context. That's what he's right. taking But the Bible certainly has been the inspiration for an amazing amount mm -hmm. of unbible-like activity. That's what I'm saying. Absolutely. And there's been more unbible-like activity. Look at just look at our century. Look at the 20th century. You know, all of the, the mass murders and killings, more people have been murdered outside of the name of religion than even in the name of religion in this century. That was just in the New York Times a year ago. And that's so, your big claim no, to fame? No, it's not. It's not. But why, is everybody <laughs> want, why does been... everybody want to put the tag on, you know, oh, the Bible is evil, or oh, we need to no, question... No, I'm not saying that. I like the Bible. That. I'm just saying I don't like the way people misuse it just as much as people could misuse it. if you yeah. like it, then be the standard and do it. That's yeah, the problem. I like the it as a book, the just like I like the cat in the hat. They say there's yeah. something and they're not. Uh, they say there's something and they're not. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, now, turnabout is fair play. We've been talking about Marilyn Manson and uh, his uh, responsibility to society and so forth. Now, you also have a record app, and I have the lyrics to one of your songs, which I think is more irresponsible than anything on one of his records. Because well, it, shoot, go ahead. Yes, it says, it talks about condoms, uh -huh. and it says, like the condoms we sell them, but we won't tell them, it ain't safe, even if you got them. So you're telling kids well, it ain't... That's not what it says. That's what the lyrics well, is. See, don't rap, you know they got holes? Listen. It says, don't you know they got holes you can't see? They might they stop might a stop baby, baby, but, but what it about hardly stops VD. Yeah, that's right. That is correct. That's Condoms were never prevent. That is correct. You need to do your homework. You check the Centers for Disease Control. You check the Centers for Disease Control. You're when I testified before the Senate in Washington, D.C., as a there? Surgeon General, when I testified, it was true. Condoms were never designed to prevent people from getting anything except for pregnant. And we encourage people to use them to stop STDs. There are at least over 50 STDs, counting all the different strains that are out there. 20 of them, at least 20 of them, a condom really can't help you with. 
Condoms don't care. How can it stop what stops pregnancy without stopping everything else? Because the HIV virus is about 450 times smaller than a sperm cell. And, and if warts. we magnify that, what about if we warts? magnify that, <laughs> what that's about, about the size of a football field would be the size so of one sperm cell. So you're telling horny teenagers is the, the only thing that you can do is be abstinent. And condoms don't work. So kids are not going to use condoms because they, they're going to listen to you and figure, well, why should we even use condoms? And that, to me, is irresponsible. No, no it's not. Sex it's responsible because I'm telling them the truth. No sex and we haven't told people the no, truth. But you're making an irresponsible impression of sex truth. throughout history that's made people so violent. I and women. You're, you're, you're making I've the irresponsible impression. Well, if you feel, if you feel <laughs> guilty, if you're feeling guilty about having I've sex. I've never known anyone who. Everybody wants to have sex. The world pregnant. was created through sex. The irresponsible yes, this assumption is, this is, true, is and God the one that you made is that the teenage children are going to have sex no matter what. That's not necessarily true at all. No, it's not. Oh, Gordon. It's not. You know what? It's, I had a lot. I had a lot of teenage companions when I was a teenager. Really? And they were not all running around getting laid. But he was also in prison, so he's got a different, <laughs> a little different. Yeah. Outlook. But I was well, as good looking whatever. as you are. Uh, being, as far as being responsible, I take full responsibility for every word that I speak when I go out and I well, speak to thousands of young people. Well, this is. Going and on top of that, I'm encouraging them to do something that and is you good. You certainly know how to speak, Lucky. Let me tell you well, that. Well, let me ask you, you this. Let thank me ask you. this. Yeah. Go, go. Let me ask you this. If I don't get laid, can I sue her because of her lyrics? <laughs> <laughs> no, because I don't have anything. I don't have for anything you get. But I would invite you to come out and hang with me and some of my friends sometime. We can do oh. a show together. I'd like to. I'm open-minded. I don't protest Sunday schools. I would schools love. Or I would like love. For, I would love to have dinner and just okay. shoot the breeze with you. But aren't right. you, right, Nikita, Aren't you hoping and then that you could be with Ted Kennedy one day? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I just, I, aren't you hoping that your CD makes a lot of money just like Marilyn hopes that he does? Isn't that what it's about? <laughs> no, it's not. Be what is it about? Because, because I've turned down more jobs than I have ever, I've turned down more jobs than I have ever worked because of I will not expose my body or I won't use foul language or I won't spread my legs for just any old Joe that comes around. I have yes. a standard that I live up to. And, you know, I'm very frank. I'm, fr I'm you know, up front. I'm very honest about I what hope, I believe. I hope that you will always be able to to uh, live like that. Well, you know what? I think I, we should encourage other I hope young you don't have do many challenges well. in life. Okay. I have very many challenges do in life. You? Yes, and I would like to come. I like for you to come to dinner with me and no, learn I think what it's the challenges are. It's, it's very and admirable you to be tab. idealistic. You know, but I, I I want people to think, but I'm not trying to think I can save the world. You know, maybe the you world doesn't deserve the world to be saved. You're not Christ. Maybe they only deserve to be oh, entertained now, before they're all destroyed. You can't judge who's Christ more. and who isn't. Energy. He may have more Christ in him than you do. You can't really say that. You will know a tree. And that's from Mrs. Brady. You will know a tree. All right, we gotta take a break and be right back. <laughs> Join us tomorrow when our guests will be Bruce Boxleitner, Bill Engvall, and Norman Owenstein. Now, you're about to say, Marilyn Manson. Yeah, just about perspectives when we were talking about Christ and me being not like Christ. I mean, if you look at things from a different point of view, one person could see Christ as being someone a lot like me. Someone with long yeah. hair, had a lot of fans, a lot of people that uh, fought. He had 12 disciples. That could have been his posse, for all we know. <laughs> and people were he against hung out, him. He hung see, out with being, hookers. He being drank. Being like Christ people is different against than him. being And they Christ. killed him. And they killed him. <laughs> But and being like Christ is different than being Christ. No, I'm just they saying, have a person. And I said, and I said you're, you're, you're not Israel. Christ. Well, it's just like you're <laughs> not Hitler. Well, I don't want to be Christ. You're not Genghis Khan. No. And you're not anyone who's, been, who's lived and is no longer here on this planet. And so, you know, if we're going to look, if we're going to look at what people said, what I didn't say Elvis? that you weren't like Christ, but you will know. <laughs> Definitely not Elvis, because, you know, you don't well, swing your hips like he does. But you anyway. You haven't seen me. Yeah. I have uh, Mrs. Brady, I think we've made a love connection. I think so. Um, I think it's on. But, you know, we're going to the prom together. Yeah. yeah. So this is what's interesting here. And this is what something I wanted to, I've always wanted to ask you, Marilyn. Okay. And Manson! Someone, no, Whichever he likes Ryan, like. okay? Whatever. For the ladies. Whatever. Uh, and since we're on national television, I want to ask you. Okay. What standards do you have and where do you draw the line as far as what is good and what is evil? I have basic principles that kind of exist in all religions, Such even as. Christianity. Such as? Well, the p fundamentals, you know, you don't kill people, you, mm -hmm. you know, you, a basic good person. 
Okay, so probably you the same as yours. Do you? No, they're not yeah, the same. No. Um, <laughs> guaranteed, they're not the same. Um, you are a minister of the, you know, of the Church of Satan. I'm not a minister of anything. Okay, because I don't know. Rhett Rolling Stone. I've I've heard that you were into the Church of Satan. I assume that you read the Satanic Bible by Anton LaVey. I read both Bibles. Okay. The Christian Bible. Too. Right. Okay, and we know that the, that the Bible has ten commandments, mm -hmm. not ten suggestions. Right. And there's one commandment in the Book of Satan. What is that commandment? I don't know. I, I don't preach. Kill the key to Bible. You don't? <laughs> <laughs> they would like to. I mean, I follow, I follow basic like principles what people like forget, anybody else would. What people no, don't what, see is that when you're is. a 14 year old or a 16 year old and you go to his concert, it enunciates what you're feeling. Do you remember what you felt like at that age? I do. Yeah, I want to bug my parents. I no, didn't. that's. Yes. That's part Isolation. Of it. Uh, in, Isolation. Unacceptable. Uh, exactly.